Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Integrated Math 2. In today's episode, we will be discussing Chapter 11.2.2, which is the surface area and volume of a cone, which is very similar to the surface area and volume of a pyramid, uh, which is wh what we're going to derive this formula from. So in 11-61, it says, review what you learned in 11-2.1 uh, by calculating the volume of each pyramid below. Here we go. The relationship between cones and pyramids should be, pretty, should be somewhat obvious, but uh, if not, then we will reveal that in a little bit. Assume the pyramid and prism in part A are, share a rectangular base and that uh, the prism in part B is a regular hexagon. So remember, when it comes to the pyramid, the volume of a pyramid was always one-third uh, times the area of the base and then times the height every single time. Now, what would alter the volume of that pyramid would be the shape of the base. So obviously in part A, it's going to be pretty easy finding the base's area. In part B, it's going to be a little more complicated because we've got a hexagon going on there. There's probably going to be some, you know, uh, hex hexagonal area finding right there, it's, you know, not a big deal. And then C is going to be just another triangle, so we can probably handle that pretty easily. So in part A here, I'm going to do one-third base times height. The height is 19, so which is good. And even though it's an oblique pyramid, the height is still uh, how far up it goes. Uh, the base is just going to be simply 14 times 6. And so once you multiply all that stuff together, you should end up getting 532 units cubed. So for part A, should be pretty obvious. I'm probably going to save the hexagon for last just because it is the most complicated shape out of all of them. Uh, part C, I'll go ahead and do real quick. Again, volume equals one-third base times height. So it'll be one-third base times height. And I'm pretty sure the height is going to be 13 here. Now, the base is a triangle in and of itself, which means what goes in here is going to be one-half base times height, right? The base being the base of the, uh, the base of the base is triangle. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do 1 half times 4 times 9. So those guys are going to become a 2. 2 times 9 is going to be uh, 18. So 18, so this is 18 here. So 18 divided by 3 is 6. So 6 times 13 should be 78 units cubed. Okay, so pretty easy so far. Uh, part B is going to be the most complicated, but even then, we've done enough hexagonal work here to where, uh, oops, darn it, it's not a very sharp edge right there. Uh, we've done enough hexagonal work here to kind of know where this goes here. So this is a 10 down here, and I know that the area of the hexagon is going to be 1 half base times height times number of triangles. I can fill in a 10 for the base. I can fill in a 6 for the uh, number of triangles. If I wanted to pop the triangle out, at this point, we should be pretty used to this uh, idea right here of the right triangle that exists inside of the hexagon with a 60-degree angle here, making this 5, making this 5 rad 3. So 5 rad 3 here. So what that's going to give to me is if I do, if I do all of this multiplication, I end up getting a base area of 150 rad 3 units, cu uh, units squared. And so that means that the volume of this thing is going to be one-third base times height. So the height is 36, and then 150 rad 3. And what we end up getting is we end up getting a total of 1,800 rad 3 units cubed. So again, it all boils down to this one-third area of the base times the height as our, as our volume of a pyramid. So give me a second. I will move on to the next problem. In 11-62, they want us to uh, study how to find the volume of a cone. And it says, while calculating the volumes of pyramids in problem 11-61, Jamal asks, but what if it's a cone? How do you compute its volume? Note that a cone is like a pyramid, but has a circular base. Every cone has a point called an apex that is uh, not on the base, and the lateral surface that connects uh, the apex to each point is a circular boundary. So... Remember, the volume, of a, the volume of a pyramid was one-third area of the base times the height. So hopefully in part A, we can make the same determination. It's going to be one-third area of base times the height. Now, it's this part here that's actually going to be called into question right here, which is the area of the base. Now, notice how they specified that the cone has a circular base. So the area of the base is going to be a 
circle. And so to find the area of a circle, it's simply pi r squared. And of course, the height will stay where it is, and the one third will stay where it is, and there is your volume of a cone formula. So from here, let's go ahead and find the volume of the cone on the right. So that, I guess that was B right there. And so, um, yeah, get, get rid of you. C, so it looks like we've got a height of 12 millimeters. The radius is going to be 8 millimeters. And I know that because the diameter is 16. And so the volume is going to be 1 third pi 8 squared times height. So that's going to be 12 right there. And so what I'm getting here is I'm going to get those guys to cancel out to get 4. So 64 times 4 pi is going to be 256 pi millimeters cubed. And that would be the volume of a cone. So pretty simple formula to remember as long as you remember, again, volume is always one third area of the base times height for anything pointy. Uh, there we go. Cool. I'll move on to the next problem. Give me a second. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to determine the surface area of a cone. Now, in the book, you're supposed to be working on an actual physical object, which is designing a party hat in the shape of a cone. You're supposed to determine how you're going to find the surface area of that cone while, um, while designing this hat for everybody. And so uh, the way we're going to do this is I actually can't do that activity now because we don't have the physical materials on us to do it digitally, but uh, I can go and show you guys the surface area of a cone's formula. So that way we can uh, figure out how this works. So the area, the surface area of a cone is pi r squared plus pi r l. Now this formula is a little odd, but there should be parts of it that make a little bit of sense. So from here, if I was to draw a cone like this, remember the surface area is the area that it takes to construct all the materials around it. So I'll go and give this uh, surface here, the circle, a radius of r. And uh, so hopefully it should make sense that this is the area of the circle. So this is the circle area. And this weird thing called pi r l is the, uh, is the stuff, is the stuff on the outside, stuff on the side, stuff on the side. The question is, is how did this happen? What, what, what is up with this? Well, we know that if we were going to find the surface area, and I'll go and derive this formula for you guys, we know that if we were to find the surface area, it's always the stuff that's all around the, the shape to construct the material. So the circle part should be relatively obvious, but I know that I have to add some something, right? Some X, right? To get all of this material that's on the side right here. And uh, that stuff wraps all the way around. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take a knife and I'm going to slice down that edge right there. And hopefully this is visible for you that if I was to slice the edge down, similar to how what we did with a cylinder, how we would cut one of the edges and then unravel it to make a rectangle. When you unravel a cone's lateral sides, what you get is you get a shape that looks like this. And hopefully it makes sense that this would wrap back up into a cone. This shape should, should look somewhat familiar. This is a sector right here. This is a sector of a circle. And so what did I just find here? Well, I don't know how uh, much this is called here, but I'll go and just call it L, all right? And since L is this high, L has to extend this much because it's the radius of that circle. And from here, the stuff on the outside, this, this edge here that I'm, going to, that I'm going to highlight in white right here, hopefully that makes sense that that would be the entire circumference of this circle. So since the radius of the circle is r, that would make this uh, highlighted in white edge right here, that would make it 2 pi r because that's equal to the circumference of a circle, right? And we've covered that before. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create a couple of different proportions here. Uh, I know that this, that, th that, uh, that this is the, it's a sector of a larger circle, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and set up a proportion that will allow me to solve for this X right here. And so I know that the area of my large circle, in other words, the, um, the area that this, that this entire thing is supposed to represent here, right? He can be found by using the formula pi 
L squared, right? Because in this particular circle, L is the radius. And I know that this 2 pi r right here is just a smaller, is a, is a portion of the circumference. So I'll just go and call this an arc length. And I know that it's 2 pi r, but I know that my total circumference is going to be 2 pi l, because l is the radius of this would-be circle. So I'm going to go and use these ideas to set up a, a proportion here. X, which is what I'm trying to find, right? That's going to be the area of this uh, of, of this piece right here. So I'll go and actually highlight that in blue. X, which is going to be this, right? Over the entirety of the circle, which would have been all of this stuff right here. So that's going to be my pi L squared. Well, I know that has to be equal to the uh, arc length, which is 2 pi R, right? The smaller over the entirety of the circumference, which is 2 pi L, right? So 2 pi L. So what can cancel out right away? I'm going to go and just solve for x, right? Because after I solve for x, I'm going to plug it back into my surface area formula. Uh, the 2 pi's are going to cancel out. And I end up with x over pi L squared equals r over L. Multiply that guy over. So x equals r times pi L squared over L. The L's are going to cancel, end up with X equaling pi, oops, uh, pi R L. Yep, that's got mixed up with the letters there. So that is how this formula is born here. It's going to be pi R squared plus pi R L. Now, for those of you who are wondering still, well, what does this L stand for? Well, the L not only was the radius of the wraparound, what L stands for is the slant height. Now, this is not the first time we've heard this word before. Uh, we've talked about slant height when it comes to finding surface area of uh, pyramids, so it makes sense that it would show up for the area of a cone as well. Um, so let's go and keep this formula in our in our bank here. That way we can, um, that way we can use it at, at will. I'll go and just draw a quick cone for us, and then we'll figure out um, some of these surface areas here. So this uh, cone right here, has a radius of 5 and a slant height of 13. And so from here, how do I determine the surface area of this thing? Well, I know it's going to be pi r squared plus pi r l. And so from here, uh, the r is pretty easy to find. It's 5. So pi times 5 squared plus pi times 5 times um, 13. So that'll be 25 pi plus, looks like 13 times 5 is 65 pi, so I'm looking at uh, 90 pi units squared as the surface area of this, of this uh, cone. So pretty straightforward. Again, these volume and surface areas, as long as you kind of understand the formula, then you're going to be pretty good. Uh, just keep this one in your back pocket because this one is a little bit weird in terms of the formula. But uh, that will wrap it up for this episode. Please feel free to leave comments or questions in the comments area, and I will see you all in the next one.